My job is uh, basically uh, described in uh, the Public Servant Servants Disclosure Protection Act. And my job is to essentially receive and analyze uh, disclosures of wrongdoing within the federal public sector as a whole, and to uh, also receive reprisals of com complaints of reprisals on the part of people who, who have disclosed wrongdoing in the past and who feel that they've been reprised against. So my job is to make sure that we uh, we uh, we properly evaluate everything we get, we d decide whether to launch a full-fledged investigation into disclosures and complaints of reprisals, and to make and to do so in a manner that is, uh, I think I would say forceful. I do have some powers under the Act, which uh, people know I have. So we have, we, uh, <coughs> we have to pursue the disclosures and the complaints of reprisals, which appear to be founded, investigate, come decide, make a conclusion, uh, come to a conclusion as to whether it is well-founded or not well-founded, and if so, uh, inform Parliament or refer the case to the tribunal in the case of a reprisal. So, the, so it's a ma it's a decision-making position akin to uh, that of a judge, essentially, <coughs> but it's also a managerial position because I'm I'm, re I'm the deputy head of the office, so I'm responsible for the smooth management of the financial, human, and IT resources of the office as well. It was. Uh, I thought, you know, when uh, when I was approached to uh, to be the interim commissioner, because mm -hmm. that's how it, that's how it all started. <coughs> I, I I saw Hiroshima, to tell you the truth, the picture the day after Hiroshima. I don't know if you remember those pictures, but so I I, I had a visual image. Then I met with the uh, the few senior managers in the office over at PCO before my appointment. In fact, before my appointment was announced, uh, to do a more. Uh, facts-based assessment of the situation. And I was pleased to see that I had, you know, the, the, the office was, was not fully staffed. There were, in fact, more than half of the positions were vacant, which is a good thing because you can build on it. Number two, the people who briefed me at the Langevin block were competent people who uh, had answers to virtually every question I asked them. So that, was, that, that felt good. And then the morning after the government announced my appointment, or the same morning, in fact, I, I met with the whole staff of the office, and I had a very positive, and I've, I've told people since mm -hmm. then. But there were, uh, there were uh, several problems. Half of the positions not being staffed. The management school I went to indicates that you should always try to optimize your budget. So that was a problem. Uh, turnover of more than 10% is a symptom of a problematic situation, it's obvious. Point two, there were uh, a lack of systems in terms of a systematic approach to the management of the work. There were, there were important uh, shortfalls uh, in the, um, the consistency with which each case made it through the process that leads to a decision. So that was clear. So that's, what, that's the state it was in. Flexibility to staff. I think there were 14 people in the office when I came in. There are currently 32 with the same budget. Uh, they were shell shocked because losing your leader is never a uh, and is is a stressful situation. Not knowing who will replace her is also stressful. And number three, the image of the office was at an all-time low, which is also a very difficult situation, especially for innocent staff members who had done anything wrong, nothing wrong, essentially. Not at all. Not Why? At all. First of all, the decision was made with, uh, after a thoughtful consideration of, the, of, all, of all the factors. Uh, <clears throat> I mentioned earlier, given the nature of what we do, uh, the image of the office is very important. We have to uh, create and maintain a sense of uh, trust and confidence. To come forward with a uh, to, to, to blow the whistle is a difficult thing to do, and you must feel some confidence vis-a-vis -vis the, uh, the organization that you go to, 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 to blow the whistle. My objective in inviting David, as well as several other people, to the advisory committee was to repair one of the one of the key, uh, the chief uh, accusations made against my predecessor was a complete lack of transparency. Uh, <clears throat> the, the the bridges had been burnt essentially. So my purpose was to provide an opportunity for some dialogue <coughs> on uh, to try to demystify what we do, what we don't do, 
uh, to also hear what uh, the stakeholders had to offer by way of advice vis-a-vis -vis a proper approach to managing the office. Uh, after a consistent series of situations where shortly after the meeting, uh, I, I would read in the press uh, important criticism of the office arising out directly of something heard at the advisory committee meeting. I thought this was a direct conflict with the, the, the objective I was pursuing, so I, I made the tough decision, uh, somewhat courageous decision, because I did expect some flack. There was some flack. Uh, but I cannot go on like this. You know, I, I, I've been appointed for up until the end of the December 2018, and life is too short you know, to continuously fear what I'll read in The Citizen the morning after, an inter after a, a meeting of the advisory committee. I think other members uh, appear they, 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 they have a sense of relief that uh, now that the I think the what we discussed at the committee uh, is now uh, <clears throat> it's not secret I, I never assumed it would be secret but there's now I think a little bit more ease in, in, in airing points of view especially on the part of officials because I have people representing uh, unions uh, people within the public sector the Treasury Board Secretariat is at the table, the tribunal, so on and so forth. So for them, it's, it's not fun either for them to always weigh everything they have to say in case somebody goes to the ill times the morning after. So, so, so I don't regret the decision. You know, everybody would like to have more power. Uh, I, I, I went to law school a few years ago, and you know, Parliament, in its wisdom, passed this, this act in 2007, the commissioner has much more powers than the predecessor, uh, the pre predecessor ad, the predecessor organization. Uh, of course, sometimes it's frustrating to keep hearing you don't have any power. Uh, I have the power to uh, find out the truth and to report it to parliament. And then things can happen afterwards, if, depending on what parliament does with it. And as well, the media exposure has already uh, produce some tangible results for uh, wrongdoers. People who were found to have committed wrongdoing have suffered consequences as a result of the report, albeit I don't have any authority to terminate their employment or discipline them or fine them and so on and so forth. So I'm happy with what I have. I think I'm trying to maximize the uh, our uh, contribution to generating more confidence in the management within the federal public sector with the powers I have, and before seeking additional powers, I'd like to really uh, make sure that I have actually maximized those I currently have.